The padlock. We use padlocks to keep our belongings safe from thieves. The padlock will remain locked until a unique shaped key releases the internal mechanism and unlocks the device. So, how does a padlock work? That's what we'll be covering in this video, which is sponsored by Squarespace. Head to squarespace.com to start your free trial, or use code ENGINEERINGMINDSET to save 10% on websites and domains. Padlocks come in many shapes, colors, and sizes. They have been around for hundreds of years, and they range in complexity of design by different people and civilizations, depending on the technology as well as the manufacturing processes that they had available. With the Industrial Revolution came the mass-produced padlock, which eventually settled on a pin tumbler design. It's called so because inside are some pins and a barrel which rotates or tumbles over. These are strong mechanical locks, which are easy to mass produce, and we find them used for everything from keeping our bikes where we left them, to symbolizing the everlasting love between two people on a bridge, and then throwing the key away to ensure the love can't be unlocked. But these types of locks, especially the cheaper ones, can be unlocked without a key if you know the correct method. And so, once we understand how the lock works, we'll also learn how to pick the lock later on in this video. When we look at a padlock, the most noticeable feature is the U-shaped shackle at the top. In the unlock position, one end of the shackle pops out from the main body, allowing this component to rotate freely. On the inside surface of the shackle, we will find two notches. These form part of the lock mechanism, and we'll see that part shortly. To lock the padlock, we simply align the end of the shackle with the hole in the lock body, and then push these together. You'll feel the internal locking mechanism engage and click into place. The shackle will now be unable to leave the body of the lock. To unlock the padlock, we need to insert the correct key into the keyhole at the bottom of the lock body, and then rotate the key until it releases the shackle. If we look inside the padlock body, we can see the locking mechanism. The first part is the plug. The key will slide into the plug and follow the grooves to ensure a smooth transition. When the key is turned, the plug will rotate. The plug has a number of holes in the top. Within each hole, there is a small metal cylinder known as a key pin. Each key pin is a different height, and this will correspond to the profile of the key. Within the housing of the lock, we find a number of chambers which are lined with the holes on the plug. Within each chamber, we find a spring which pushes another pin, known as the driver pin. The spring pushes the driver pin into the corresponding hole of the plug until it touches the key pin. This also ensures the driver pin remains in contact with the key pin even when the padlock is rotated upside down. The intersection between the plug and the lock housing is known as the shear line. With no key inserted, the driver pin sits partway in the housing chamber and partway within the plug. This means the plug is therefore unable to rotate. When a key is inserted into the lock, the key pins will follow the profile of the key and move up and down until the key is fully inserted. Once fully inserted, if the correct key has been used, then the top of each key pin will align with a shear line. The driver pins will have been pushed up and will now fully sit within the housing, while the key pins sit fully within the plug. This means the plug is now able to rotate. If the wrong key is inserted, then the pins will not align and the plug will be unable to rotate. Notice this lock has six spring-loaded chambers. Only five of these are used by the key to form part of the lock, but the sixth driver pin sits within a deep groove and is not used by the key. Instead, this pin is preventing the plug from being pulled out of the lock body, and it does this because it is always engaged into the groove in both the locked and the unlocked position. So, once we have the correct key and we can rotate the plug, we now need a way to release the shackle whilst ensuring it can't be removed without the key. At the end of the plug, we have a cam. This is just a piece of metal which extends off of the body of the plug, but it has this shape to it that allows it to act like a lever. Surrounding the cam on each side is a latch. The outermost ends of each latch is angled, 
and this angled edge will fit into the notches of the shackle. A spring sits within the lock and will push against each of the latches, forcing it outwards so that the angled edges will be forced into the notches. This interlocking of the latch and the notch prevents the shackle from being pulled out. The innermost end of each latch has a small arm which extends out and rests against the flat edge of the cam. One latch will rest against the top, whilst the other rests against the bottom. When the cam rotates, its shape causes the latch arms to pull inwards against the spring, detaching them from the notches of the shackle. At this point, the shackle could be manually lifted out, but to make it easier to use, a spring is placed under the longest side of the shackle within the main lock body. This spring will push the shackle out, making it easier to use, but also letting us visually tell if the lock is locked or unlocked. So, to recap on the operation of a padlock, the key is inserted into the plug. The different size key pins rest inside a number of holes inside the plug, and these will move up and down to follow the profile of the key. If the correct key is inserted, then the top of the key pins will align with the top of the plug. This pushes the driver pins out of the plug holes and into their respective chambers. The springs will ensure that the driver pins will be forced into the holes if the wrong key or no key is inserted. With all the pins now cleared, the key can rotate the plug. At the end of the plug is a cam, which also rotates with the plug. This cam connects with the arms of the two latches. The latches are pushed outwards by a spring. This spring pushes the arms against the cam, but also pushes the latches into the notches on the shackle, preventing the lock from opening without a key. With the correct key inserted, the plug is free to rotate. This rotates the cam, which pulls the latches inwards against the spring, releasing the shackle. A spring within the shackle chamber pushes the arm outwards, releasing the lock. So now that you understand how the padlock works, we can understand how to bypass the security mechanisms. The most important part is that the internal pins align with the shear line. So for that, we need a lock picking kit. If you want to clearly understand the mechanisms of how locks work, as well as how to pick a lock, then you can buy one of these transparent locks. These clearly show you the pins of each chamber, as well as how the components work together as you lock and unlock it. If you would like one of these, then I'll leave a link in the video description down below for where you can get one. If we look through the keyhole, we can see the key pins inside the plug and the driver pins pushing down against these. From the side, we see the spring-loaded latches engaging with the notches in the shackle, which prevents the lock from unlocking without a key. The shackle spring is also fully compressed. As we insert the key, we can see the pins move up and down following the profile of the key. With the key fully inserted, we have all six pins aligned with the shear line. So with a little twist, we can disengage the lock mechanism. Notice as we continue to rotate the key, we can see the cam on the end of the plug moving the arms of the latches. This pulls the latches inwards away from the shackle notches and disengages the lock. With the plug rotated into the unlocked position, we can see the key pins inside the plug and the driver pins in their spring-loaded chambers. The shackle has been pushed out by the internal spring. Notice that a groove has been cut into the shackle arm and a bar within the lock's body passes through this space, preventing the shackle from leaving fully. So, to unlock the device, we need to move the pins to the shear line and also rotate the plug. To do that, we take a torque wrench and insert that into the lock, and then apply a light rotational force. Then, using a hook, we nudge each key pin until it lifts the corresponding driver pin to the shear line. And as we complete the set of pins, we will feel the lock mechanism disengage and the shackle pops out. Notice that only six of the seven spring-loaded chambers needs to be nudged. The last chamber doesn't move up and down with a key, and we don't need to nudge this because it's simply there to prevent the plug from being pulled out of the lock body. We can also pick the lock a lot faster by again applying a light rotational force to the plug, 
and then fully inserting the hook and quickly scraping across the pins to catch them at the shear line and unlock the device. And if you want to unlock the power of the web, then check out squarespace.com to create your own online web presence, which is packed with features to empower individuals to launch, share, and promote their own projects. There's powerful blogging tools to showcase your project's photos, videos, and progress updates. You can easily schedule appointments for classes and sessions with both team members or clients, all through their inbuilt tools. And you can even collect payments or donations to help support your cause. Head to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com forward slash injuring mindset to save 10% of your first purchase of a website or a domain. Okay guys, that's it for this video, but to continue your learning, then check out one of the videos on screen now and I'll catch you there for the next lesson. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, as well as theengineeringmindset.com.